Hello iOS fans, Robin here, back once more, not with a deck review for you this week, I'm going to give you my initial thoughts on one of the new warbands, that today will be Iltharis Guardians. Now I know lots of people have talked about these sort of in advance of the release and after the release, Pete and I seem to have had a crazy time recently, we haven't really got to grips with these guys yet. We haven't played them due to the fact that we had in our schedule um, our first game of um, Blackstone Fortress was going to be our this week, I and mean, that was all arranged, and we didn't want to um, knock that about. So uh, the first week that we actually had the warbands in hand, we couldn't, we didn't play them. Um, so we haven't played them yet. But I've had a quick look through the cards, and I've picked out a few choice ones. They're not that many. I would say not that many choice ones, and that perhaps has been partly why people have been a little bit jaded about this release. That's not quite true. We're still loving the game. Possibly they're getting too many cards. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, there will be a separate video on that subject coming out soon, so look out for that. Um, it's more more to do with series three, uh, but um, I'll look out for that soon. So let's have a look at these cards. These aren't all going to be great cards. Um, some of them are just cards that I find interesting, and some of them are cards I think I don't think are that great. Um, but I just thought I picked out a few of my choice cards, if you like. I'm going to go through and roughly it'll be the faction-specific ones first, and then move on to the, the universals. So I'm going to start with Curse of the Dwindling. So the Curse of the Dwindling, I quite like this one. It's Gambit Spell. I think the Guardians may may be um, using mag more magic, perhaps. The, the, their magic user is quite good, although there is only one of her, and it always gives me the heebie-jeebies. This Curse of the Dream I quite like is two lightning and trying to kind of avoid the focus cards as well. And this basically gives them minus one dice on their attack actions. And this persists until that fighter is out of action. Quite like this, particularly against Monarch, that's pretty reliable to really hamper him. So Curse of the Dwindling I quite like. And then this one I just think has got a brilliant name. A lot of these have brilliant names. Pangs of the Great Lack. If this spell is cast, choose an enemy fighter within five hexes of the caster. That fighter suffers one damage. It is a focus which is perhaps less than ideal, but one damage is, is never to be sneezed at. From five hexes, definitely never to be sneezed at. And there are a few cards now where you can convert, you know, the vice versa card uh, could could potentially be useful there. Quite like it, just love it because it's called Pangs of the Great Lack mainly, and I can see that might sneak into a, a heavy magic-based deck. And now my next card, my favourite card of all the new releases, possibly the entire game, is Spring Seed Step. And this is not because of what the card does. The card is play this after a fighter friendly's move action, choose another friendly fighter and push them up to three hexes. They must end this push adjacent to the fighter that moved. I can see why that might be useful. It is a faction specific card. I can see where that could be useful, but it's called Spring Seed Step. I'm a massive Bruce Springsteen fan, and basically you're going to hear me singing Born in a Walnut Tree every time I play this card. So that's why I love Spring Seed Step. Leech Power, pretty great looking card. I love the art on this card and um, leech power I can see this could be useful for the source of a scouring objective or whatever it's called the one that destroys an objective leech power is going to be good for that move on an objective destroy the objective and gain some glory um, it's pretty useful and of course it potentially messes up your tactical supremacies and what have you as well and of course um, Ithari could possibly take Aversworth unmaking as well so that's pretty uh, they can play a pretty anti-objective game I quite like Leech Power. Mesmerizing Guard is quite interesting because it enables you to remove guard tokens or uh, move place move tokens next to the enemy fighter, which so that could really mess up some plans. I quite like Mesmerizing Gaze. Inescapable Grasp. Rolls of dodges are not successes. Two dodges are becoming the de facto choice, or multiple dodges, even three dodges, become the de facto choice for warband defense. Uh, in this game, so Ithari being able to uh, stop them with a possible this possible upgrade, I think could be uh, could be good. And then another great named card as I move on to the objectives for them: Reclaim the Lamentiri. So this one I love the name of as well: Reclaim the Lamentiri. I have to say I love the aesthetic and I love the names of these cards. And I have to say if I was going to play AOS again, I probably would try and pick up a Silver Death Army. I really like the look and feel of it. So I do like these guys for that reason. And this one is scoring an end phase if you hold all the objectives in at least one player's territory. Well, of course that could be your territory, and if you're been using the authority to blow objectives up that could be nice and easy to score so I quite like that and I do those of you who watch regularly do know I do like my sneaky objective game so I can see me using that card live spirits score this immediately if it takes a second or subsequent reaction in this phase again it's a score immediately card which is great two reactions uh, often you do two reactions in a game and these guys obviously they have reactions built in so I can see live spirits being another great card uh, for the uh, Guardians and I, and I can see myself taking that one. Glade's Last Hope. Score this in an end phase if at least three wound takers were removed from the Fighters card 
of friendly fighters in the preceding action phase. Well, there's been lots going around whether you, about whether you can use preserve life or tainted vitality to uh, inspire your entire warband. And the answer to that is, unless you've all, they're all, all wounded, you can't. But maybe there's this whole combination with Shard Gale where you wound everybody, then heal everybody, and everybody's inspired. I mean, the, the chances of all this coming off already, so that's two cards you've got to have in hand. You could you could possibly have uh, Glade's Last Hope and score this at an end phase if at least three wound takers are removed from the fighter cards of friendly fighters. Well, that would score you that. And you could combine that with uh, Preserve Life, which is if you lose one wound from at least two surviving friendly fighters. So you could potentially score Preserve Life and Glade's Last Hope all in one go. Preserve Life is a, although it has a silver and F on it, on the front it is a, a universal card. So yeah, you could, if you were going the Shard Gale healing up route, then maybe you might have that yourself. Uh, maybe good for the Oryx. I don't know. What do you think? I'm not, not a brilliant card, but I can see that that being a nice little combo. They're possibly hard to pull off. As soon as you start having multiple card combos, it becomes uh, tricky to actually ever get to work. Song of Hatred. Uh, score this immediately if your warband successfully cast their second or subsequent spell in this phase and this kind of feeds in uh, that is a, a specific card but then there's also a magical storm in this deck which is score this in the end phase if your warband scores four or more spells four or more is feels to me like it's becoming doable in this meta especially if you play curse breakers and this is universal i mean six more magical mastery i got nowhere near in the six games i think i played uh, with the magic deck it wasn't optimized i don't think that magic deck but this one maybe it's becoming closer closer to happening so andrew if you're listening maybe we'll score magical storm life surge well life surge is basically tainted vitality uh, so i won't talk any more about that one a bolt of inspiration now this card i think I love the art on it, but I think it's basically useless. It's a spell. It's reasonably easy to cast a spell. Uh, scatter one hex from any hex on the battlefield. Any fire from that end hex is inspired. So it's like a much, much less reliable version of Inspiration Strikes. Now, I did read Jamie Giblin today. He uh, was talking about whether Inspiration Strikes was going to be next on the band list because it's basically a kind of takes away from the interesting inspire mechanics of the whole game because you can just inspire people. This one will probably obviously stay in and perhaps then it will become a useful card because you might chance it then but um, i'm still not sure but bottom inspiration so that's in here that's kind of in here for card art and interest i'm not sure it'll ever make it into a deck a well of power as a card if you're playing magic will end up in every deck that is ever playing magic basically once you're inspired they can use an extra dice to attempt to cast a spell this is so good for the curse breakers they're already rock um, and this makes them rocker. So that's a uh, world of power. And the scroll of recall, again, I think this card I like as a card. Again, whether it's good enough. And that kind of sort of hints at some of the problems I'm having with the game. Not having, not problems as such, but there's lots of really, really cool cards, but they're not quite good enough to uh, break the top, uh, sort of into the top 25, if you like. Um, and and then, therefore, they don't get played very often. It's a shame. I like this one. It's called a recall. Basically, you can um, discard a card, roll a magic dice, and then if you get a lightning, you can pop it on the top of your deck rather than um, in the uh, on the discard pile. So that potentially uh, could be interesting or good. Good. I mean, if you imagine if you had Absoth Withering and got to cast it twice or something like that, um, that would be pretty immense. And then this one, a Lethal Repertoire. Lethal Repertoire. Score this in an uh, end phase of Friendly Fighter makes attack action in the preceding action phase pr printed on an upgrade that you played in the same phase. Or that rather long means, think, I think means if you played an upgrade that phase you can, and you use it, then uh, and you only have to make an attack action with them. You can you can score this card. It's not a score immediately card, so that's a bit of a shame. Uh, but things for those of you who like playing mutated maul or you know a bit of ready for action action, um, then lethal repertoire I think could be useful. And finally, we get a card with a dwarf on it, um, or not just a dwarf, a fire slayer, the blessing of blessing of Ignax, which is another card I like. I love its potential plus two damage. Um, which I love the potential of, but it has one of these kind of things that I I think is a shame in a quite a lot of these cards. They have quite neat effects, and I understand that they need some game balance. So you have to take an action to use them, and I just feel with the action economy in this game, this mechanic doesn't work for me. That it never feels worth it to have. Oh, I got plus two. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I got plus two damage. Oh, there's nobody to fight now. I just feel that. Um, I don't know this fight is next action, so it could be later, maybe. Um, but I, ju I just feel that 
Maybe if you're playing ready for action, you could put this on. That would be pretty good. That would be pretty smart, actually, just thinking of that as I read it. Uh, but I, I kind of like it. But this, this action economy, I, I'm not so keen on. I think it's a shame. It's, I kind of like it with, with Potion of Rage or whatever. It's like a good effect, but you can only use it once. And once it's gone, it's gone. I quite like that. And I feel like maybe they, these cards, these sorts of cards would be better if they had the same mechanic. But I do like the fact that a little fire slayer there with the dragon. And uh, I do like the potential of plus two damage. And I do quite like the idea of doing this with ready for action. Again, whether it will make it in, break it into the top cards, I'm not sure it will, uh, but I'd rather like it. So um, that's all the cards I, I kind of noted that I enjoyed from Ilthari's Guardians. Let me know what your favourite ones are. Let me know. I know lots of people have played them. I've seen people winning glass with them already, so clearly people are doing well with them. Let me know what your favourite tricks and tips and tactics are for them. I'm going to be building a deck with these guys uh, pretty much from now, trying to do something interesting with them uh, to take on Pete. Pete's going to be playing um, the Profiteers. So we'll, we'll see how we go with that. So until our next match, enjoy your night vaulting and enjoy the new warbands. And we'll speak to you soon. Bye.